Hello and welcome to the Homeschool Effect. This is the podcast from homeschool graduates and mentors to homeschool families. We're here providing encouragement and inspiration to, to homeschool families along their journey. Today, I'm joined by Nicole Nystrom. Nicole is a singer, songwriter, and just released her, her actually, is it your first, um, first single? It is. It's my okay. first single. First yeah. single, Hearts First on Spotify. If you haven't listened to it, just look up Nicole Nystrom, Hearts First on Spotify. I'll, I'll post a link in the show notes as well, so you can just click on it and, and listen to it there. Uh, Nicole, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much, Josh, for having me. I'm so excited. It's great to be able to, to speak with you about everything and encourage other homeschoolers. So, <laughs> Awesome. Great. Well, can you just give like a quick like three to five minute background of yourself, um, but maybe a little bit about your homeschool journey like, and then what you're doing today? Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, I I went to uh, like a year or two of private Christian school and my parents, um, you know, in the same small town and, uh, you know, born and raised there in Woodstock, Illinois. And uh, my mom had a bunch of other women that were encouraging her um, that they had started to homeschool their kids and that it was a really you know, um, a great transition and, and just journey for them. And they felt like, uh, they could really, uh, raise their families, you know, in a, in a different way and a, in a whole nother level. Um, and so she decided to give it a try. Her, her and my dad decided that and, uh, you know, started homeschooling me at about, uh, fourth grade. And that was definitely interesting, like being pulled out of school, um, but I was excited to do it. I was excited to try it. Um, there were a few other, you know, kids in my community that were, that I knew of that were homeschooling. Um, so I didn't feel, you know, alone in that respect. Um, and I, I really actually, I think the biggest thing that hit me right away is I love, love, loved being able to work at my own pace. Um, and so it was, yeah, a great journey, just starting from, from about fourth grade, um, and, and up into high school when I graduated. So, uh, it definitely, um, was something that, uh, you know, as you grow up, you kind of wonder, hmm, you know, would I want to go back to school or would I want to go to, to high school so I could join band or this or that? But I, I always kind of landed in that. Um, I appreciated being, being able to be homeschooled and, and kind of have that individualized education and work at your own pace and um, be able to do things like pursue piano and pursue music and pursue horses and have that time, you know, to do those things. Um, so yeah, I remember one of my high school friends who went to the nearby public school would ask me that, well, what do you want to come, you know, to high school and we're friends and we could hang out more. And, and I, I remember having that thought like, geez, maybe I should, and I could, you know, join all these extracurriculars. Um, but I really, like I said, felt like, you know, riding horses, doing piano at the time, my healers, and it was already what I loved. So it was, you know, it was the right fit. So, um, yeah, I basically did riding lessons from when I was about probably 13, um, up into, into college. Um, and that was something that was huge, huge, huge part of my life. Um, just fell horse crazy in love with riding animals, the whole nine yards. Um, and, uh, eventually while I was trying to figure out, you know, what do I want to do with my life and where does, where does God seem to be leading me? Um, I was, I just kept coming back to, you know, man, maybe I could teach riding lessons just like I'm being taught. Maybe I could have my own farm and, and my own business and, and do this, you know? Uh, so toyed with the idea of, of actually becoming a teacher or, um, you know, doing something with music, um, and came back to, 
to the horse uh, life, the horse industry. Um, and so before we continue, the best way to support the homeschool effect is to head on over to patreon.com slash homeschool effect and become a patron. Patrons get access to extra content that might not get added into the final episode. They get to participate in giveaways that are exclusively only for patrons. Uh, they get access to merch depending on what tier you are. You can get stickers, t-shirts, or mugs. Top tier platinum patrons get shout outs on the show. And of course, all patrons receive our unyielding gratitude. The show is not free to make, so your support is much appreciated. Uh, decided to uh, find a school that had an equine program so I could still get a college education and pursue that. And landed on a college down in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, that was a, a private Christian university that had this amazing, super hands-on um, equine program. Uh, so that was Asbury University um, and enrolled, uh, transferred, transferred over, had done community college for a year and, and transferred uh, down to Kentucky um, and tried to do both. So music and horses have always been like just head to head in my life. Um, which can be difficult to, to give enough time to each. Um, so I did actually pursue um, a music, a vocal performance minor, as well as an equine science and management major, um, which was quite a bit of work, uh, to say the least. But uh, yeah, so I, I did that. I went through college, got a degree, um, and uh, just went headfirst into the equine industry, uh, got a job out in California right away um, after I graduated and worked for an amazing uh, ministry um, on Palomar Mountain, which is in Southern California and worked as the assistant to the director of the girls horse camp program. So we did a lot of discipleship and horsemanship and you name it for those girls. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to make this short, sorry. Uh, but it's just to bring me to now, yeah, I kind of have moved around a lot. So I worked in California um, for that little bit and uh, then ended up moving back, back home to Illinois and worked several different horse jobs, just working my way up from a therapeutic uh, farm where uh, you know, I was taking care of all the animals that would be the therapy um, animals for children with disabilities um, and work my way up into instructing at my first uh, riding barn um, and then even opened my own small business where I was teaching students um, on my own and, and had a partnership at another facility where I could basically run my own program, which was really cool. Uh, yeah. And then from there worked some more training, training, uh, um, positions that were a lot of hard physical work, a lot of, you know, just learning the trade, learning how to make a horse go from knowing nothing to being able to be ridden. Um, and really, you know, have always enjoyed horses and enjoyed, uh, how to, to train people to be able to work with them and train horses to be able to work with people, you know, vice versa. Um, and I know uh, it probably comes as a surprise because I'm, I'm doing a lot of music right now and not as much horses. <laughs> um, but it's definitely um, something that is very, um, it's hard work and, and I love that it doesn't bother me at all that it's such a hard work in that industry. Um, but it was definitely difficult to live off of, you know, to be able to support yourself, um, as well as, as work in the horse industry. Um, so I definitely was inspired to pursue music, um, in some different ways. I'm sure we can get into later. Um, that really inspired me to, to kind of uh, hit the ground running with writing and with 
trying to put my own music out, which is something I always have wanted to do um, since I was a, a little girl and, and trying to keep horses in my life as well. So uh, now uh, I work actually at a vet clinic uh, nearby um, and I do still teach a few lessons on the side um, and then enjoy my own horses and have been pursuing my music. So they, they are trying to be, you know, working hand in hand in my life. So. <laughs> awesome. All about that balance. Well, thanks for that. Thanks for the intro. Exactly. Um, but let's talk about hearts first. Um, yeah, you know, absolutely. What inspired you to, to write the song and what, it, what does it mean to you? For sure. Um, so I first started writing actually in California, which I briefly mentioned before. Um, I'd written a little bit growing up, like poetry and things like that. Um, but I was on the mountain working there. It was really difficult to, um, there wasn't like any Wi Fi, TV, anything like that, because we were just, you know, on a mountain doing this ministry stuff 24 seven with these kids, which was amazing. Uh, so in my spare time, um, a, fr a coworker of mine let me borrow a guitar um, and all summer long, I would practice chords and, and write songs whenever I had um, a moment to do so. So that kind of started the push of, of writing. Um, and she was so encouraging just to, to keep writing no matter what, you know, even if it doesn't seem like the best song or the best lyric to just keep doing it. Um, and so um, after that, uh, a little bit of time passed and I was back here in Illinois and I actually got into a songwriting conference in Nashville. Um, so there was 30 other artists allowed to, to come in and, and write and just learned a lot about, you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are as as a writer um so uh, that really helped to hone the skill so i'd been just writing 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 after that conference and trying to use everything i learned um i had moved back to kentucky for a little while where where i was going to school to be closer to nashville and pursue some music there um and then ended up back in illinois so a lot of moving over the last few years um, but just trying to follow the Lord's leading. And so in that time, um, I definitely felt weird coming back to Illinois where I'd grown up. And, you know, at this age in your mid twenties, everyone's kind of gotten married, had babies, moved to other States. So there's not a whole lot of that core group left to connect with. Um, and so I would say, uh, in that search for, you know, trying to find, you know, where the Lord's leading you and trying to find someone to settle down with eventually, I succumbed to the dating app world. <laughs> and um, I'd been on one of the dating apps for a little bit and just going on a few dates and, and meeting some new people. And, um, you know, a few of those had gone by and, you know, not, nothing really hit it off. Some of them are actually my friends still to this day <laughs> and uh, just kind of what's inspired uh, while writing and playing guitar at one point throughout that time, because uh, it's very much a different world with all the social media, everything is right there in front of us at our fingertips. And then now we have not just dating websites, but these apps that are just right there and it's, you know, it's a crazy different world to meet someone. Um, so when I was writing this song, it kind of just came to me, um, and I'll pull up the words to kind of reference here too. Awesome. Um, yeah, so the beginning, you know, call me crazy baby, but I think that maybe um, we could hit it off. If I could tell you, honey, I would say I could save you from the moment that our love might stop. So that whole thing is just saying, you know, you're you're trying to put yourself out there, right? You're trying to figure out um, if you can just be honest and open with people and put yourself out there to find someone. 
Um, and it's hard in this generation and this culture right now uh, to do that uh, because people are all about instant gratification and just wanting it to either work right now or not, you know? Um, and so I think those words definitely touch on, um, you know, if I could tell you if it's going to work out, I would, but I can't, I can't see to the future. Um, I can only live in, in this moment now. Um, and then the pre-chorus, which I actually get asked about the most when people ask me about words in a song, um, says, I am a mind reader, baby, but I can't see what you see in me. I ain't a tattoo artist, darling, but I could draw, I can't draw the size of your heart in. So um, basically saying just a creative artistic way, you know, a metaphor that, you know, again, I can't read your mind. I don't know how you feel about me. I don't know what the future is going to hold um, or, or how you view me. Um, and then uh, also that, you know, I really like to write music that is um, going to be relatable, something that um, people uh, currently are, are going to feel and go, wow, I really, that hits home with me. Um, so the tattoo artist thing, again, is just an artistic way to outline, you know, people in, in this day and age, in our age group, they love to express themselves in that way. They love it, right? And for people to see that about them right off the bat. So I think that's something I was trying to paint there too, is that, you know, um, if I were a tattoo artist, I can't draw in the size of your heart. You know, I don't know how much you love or how big your heart is. I like to, to think about the Grinch um, and how he had such a shriveled heart. <laughs> and once he found out how to love, his heart grew in size. So it's similar to that, you know, aspect. The chorus, um, we don't know how to love blindly. So we sabotage the what could be. We're so used to being used too much. All our love becomes is a crutch. We don't know, or we don't need to dive in head first, baby. All we got to do is put our hearts first. Um, and that is again, just hitting home with the idea that it's hard for people um, probably over the span of all time, but it feels like more intensified right now in our age group and our culture that um, a lot of young people are afraid to, to love blindly and thus unconditionally, right? Um, they wanna find that thing right now. And if it's too hard, they're out right <laughs> and again I'm not saying everyone is is like that definitely different personalities um but it's it seems to be very present in our in our culture um and then just to the the sense where we we get so reliant on that person too it can be a crutch right and and that's part of that lyric there and then we hit home with the hook which is just um we don't need to dive in head first, baby. All we got to do is put our hearts first saying like, okay, you don't have to dive into this, um, you know, in a way that you're, you don't need to dive in head first and just throw like all cares away in that sense. Um, but you can put each other's hearts first and, and, um, like learn how to, how to love blindly, how to love unconditionally, um, in a time where that's um, not perceived as much. Um, yeah, and then I think I try to bring it home in the end, um, the last couple of verses that um, let's just take our time. Maybe our hearts will rhyme and we can make it through. You know, it's just that, that full circle resolution of um, let's just take our time see if it works and, and maybe it will work out, you know, maybe it will. And, and we can grow through that situation. <laughs> so awesome. hearts first. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's such a very personable 
it sounds like a very personal song, very vulnerable too. I think that's great that you wrote such a very vulnerable piece, which kind of alludes to what your song was saying today. It's not a lot of people are vulnerable today. Not a lot of people are willing to put in the work and are um, don't want to love unconditionally. A lot of conditional love out there. It's a little sad, really. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. It is. No, that's great. <laughs> How long did it take you to write this song? I know you kind of mentioned that you started writing it in, was it California or was it in, uh, in um, Nashville? Um, so it was after Nashville when I was back here in Illinois and Chicago area. Um, and so I started writing it in um, 2020. And then a lot of times, for some reason, my writing style, I'll, I'll I'll have an inspiration or an idea come to me and then I come back to it later on. So it was something that I started writing and then came back to it towards the end of the year, um, finished that um, just in time to kind of start recording it. So now talk to me a little bit about a little bit more about your live performances. I know you perform live um, multiple times a week, actually, right? Is that right? Um, so I would say it definitely depends since we've had a lot of uncertainty with live events right, um, right. since with everything going on um, with the world. So uh, it, it definitely does depend. I'd say um, for 2021, I had a really good year. Um, I played probably around 30 shows, which is really good for how many places were uh, kind of pulling back on live performances. So I was so grateful just to be playing at all, um, which was, so it was great to be able to do that many. Um, I would say on average, it's um, maybe like three to four a month right now. Um, so I'm just kind of in that starting process of booking for 2022. So. Awesome. That's yeah. great. Um, in yeah. terms in terms of just like, say, homeschool kids or parents mm -hmm. that have kids right now that are interested in, in, in music, what kind of advice would you give them um, if they wanted to, to start out or get into like maybe live performances? Absolutely. Um, well, I like to say that I've, I've been both a student and a teacher because I have taught music lessons before as well, vocal and piano. Um, and then having been a student of music and a student of, you know, of equestrian and riding and all of that, um, it definitely the core, probably first thing, which might sound cliche is do not give up. Do not give up. If it's something you enjoy, if it's a dream you have, um, because I, <laughs> I remember being like a seventh grader going, listening to my Christian, you know, rock in you know in my little walk man in the car skillet. and going, man yeah exactly skillet and all those great bands and uh thinking man I just want to make an album someday you know that would be amazing um so do not give up again if you're taking lessons whatever instrument it is um or you're a vocalist I've definitely gone through those, those little pieces of time where I just want to give up. I, when I was around 13, 14, probably during my piano, piano lessons period of time, uh, I remember hating practicing. My mom would have to set a timer and be like, go practice. And I hated it. You know, I was just so frustrated with it. But once I got over that hump of time and got to the point where I could play more of what I enjoyed, um, then, you know, it became a whole, a whole new world. Um, same for, for vocalists. I had amazing vocal instructors in junior high and high school that were so inspiring, helped me get ready for college. And once I got into college, I had vocal, you know, performance major inst uh, instruction, uh, excuse me, instructors who, were really pushing me hard and pushing me in directions I did not want to go at all. But I'm so grateful for that time because it expanded my vocal range and helped me to really hone skills I didn't have before. Um, and I would say also to surround yourself by either mentors or um, instructors or just other musicians that can you know, be an encouragement to you. 
Um, and if you don't have that, you know, don't, don't stray away from what you like. You know, if you want to sing jazz music when you grow up or you want to play ukulele, but no one else around you does it, you know, keep going for it because um, that'll make you unique. Um, also, I would say, you know, find out how you learn. And if you have, you know, something you're struggling with, find a different way to learn it, you know, find a different instructor or a different way to learn it. Or like with guitar, I'm self-taught, you know, I didn't really have an instructor. I just picked a song that I loved. I drilled it over and over and over until I was comfortable with it. So just picking, you know, picking things that are going to make you enjoy it is huge. Um, I'd say one last thing would be, uh, don't think that it's all roses because it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work for me even to produce uh, and, and release this single. You know, you have every step of the way when you're not, when you're an independent artist, you're not with a label, you have to do each and every step of the process. You know, you're writing it, you're arranging it, you're recording it, you're doing your copyright, you're licensing, you're distributing your PRO doing everything so uh, for me I've loved every single piece of that journey it was so exciting um, but don't give up and and know that it's going to be some work um, but you'll get there yeah awesome thanks for that that's, that's good advice <laughs> if if the audience wanted to support you on your on your journey what what are ways that they could support you and what ways can they support you yeah thank you for asking that um Definitely listening to my song. Every stream helps. I'm actually on all major streaming platforms. So I'm on Apple Music, um, iTunes for 99 cents if you want to purchase the song, um, Amazon Music, Pandora, iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, like Josh mentioned, YouTube Music. It's out everywhere. So listening to my music, um, you can go on to my Instagram which is Nicole N Music, if you are in the Illinois area. Um, I do sometimes play in uh, Lexington, Kentucky as well. Um, you can look out for shows uh, as well as I do have some merch that I'm starting to put out on the internet um, that'll be for sale. So, yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks, Nicole. Thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a <laughs> blast. It was great to, to talk with you. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and head on over to our website to subscribe to our newsletter. That's homeschooleffectpodcast.com. Again, that's homeschooleffectpodcast.com. We'll see you next time.